Recently on Wednesdays for our Spotlight each week, we've been looking at the uh, letters to the churches that Jesus had sent to them, the, the letters to the churches of Asia that Jesus had sent in the book of Revelation. And we've looked at each letter and at the characteristics and the good and the bad and what was said to them and have tried to apply the, the lessons, the examples, the instructions that are given to them, trying to apply it to our own lives today. And we come to the final letter that we have, uh, the final church there in uh, the book of Revelation mentioned here, and that's the church in Laodicea. This is going to be in Revelation chapter 3. We're going to be picking up in verse 14 today. If you're going to follow along or you can just listen along. Revelation chapter 3 starting in verse 14 when he says to the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write these things says the amen the faithful and true witness the beginning of the creation of God. So again addressing himself he is the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of God's creation. He is the one who created all things. Notice he says, verse 15, I know your works, as he told all the churches, all the brethren. I know your works, but notice what he says about their works. Notice what he says about them. That you are neither cold or hot. I could wish that you were cold or hot, he says. So then, because you are lukewarm, he calls them. You're not cold, you're not, or, <laughs> you're not cold, you're not hot, you're lukewarm. Therefore, he says, since you're lukewarm and neither cold or hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. So he is using that imagery of, you know, something, you know, to drink. That when you want something cold, you want something cold. When you want something hot, you want it hot. But lukewarm is not really the greatest. And so he says, because you are lukewarm, I will spit you out. I will vomit you out of my mouth. Because, here's part of the problem, verse 17. Because you say, I am rich and have become wealthy. I have need of nothing. But actually, you do not know that you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. So really, they have been deceived. Really, they have deceived themselves. They, they think they're good. They're wealthy. They have whatever. They, they don't need anything. They're, they're thinking that everything's just great and dandy. And actually, no, it's not, Jesus tells them. And so Jesus says to them, verse 18, I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire that you may be rich. Jesus is pointing them to spiritual richness with him, with God. You know, they may have all the riches in the world, but be, be poor spiritually, which it seems to be the case. So Jesus tells them, buy from me. Buy from me spiritual riches, gold refined in the fire that you may be rich, and white garments that you may be clothed, that the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed. And anoint your eyes with eye salve that you may see they're blind. Their eyes are being blinded. They need ointment, salve to be able to see. And then Jesus tells them, verse 19, as many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. You know, Jesus here, he's, he's getting on to them. He's rebuking them. He's chastening them. But he's t he reminds them that it's because he loves them. He says, as many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. That's the way it works with parents who discipline and train their children because they love them and want them to grow up learning to do right. God disciplines and trains us because he loves us and wants us to do right. Jesus says, I am doing this because I love you. I am rebuking you, chastening you. Therefore, be zealous and repent. Turn and repent. Be zealous 
And love back to God, back to Jesus, should be what, what, what drives that zeal is our love for God. He says, be zealous and repent of what you've done, of what you're not doing. Turn and repent and come back. Stop being lukewarm. Behold, he then goes on to say, verse 20, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him and he with me. This beautiful imagery as if Jesus was there at the door and if we open the door, he will come in and he will dine with us. We will dine with him. And really, that door is the door to our hearts, to our lives. And if we will open it, live for Jesus, have fellowship with him, that's what he's calling for. And so, to him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne, as I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. Again, this message of overcoming. Overcoming these sins, overcoming these problems, overcoming tribulations, whatever the case may be. You overcome these, these issues that you're having. Come back, be faithful to me. And we will sit with him on his throne, reign with him in heaven, have the blessings of God eternally. Just as Jesus was faithful and obeyed, and Jesus went and sat with his father on his throne. And finally, he says, he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. And are we listening? Do we have ears that hear? Do we have a heart that hears? A heart that is willing to listen? A heart that is willing to be uh, rebuked and chastened and corrected when in the wrong? God did all of this. Jesus did all of this because of his love. Jesus rebuked many of these churches, many of these brethren for the wrong they were doing because he loves them and wanted them to repent and be back in fellowship with him. You know, this church, not a lot of detail, we're given some details, but the idea of them being lukewarm. Uh, we don't need to be lukewarm today. We need to be zealous for the Lord, diligent, passionate, loving God, and to truly have spiritual health and wealth from him and not be deceived like these brethren who were lukewarm. They thought they were rich. They thought, ah, oh, we're good, but really they needed a lot. And we got to make sure we don't deceive ourselves into thinking that, you know, we don't need God or need his word or need help and guidance. But that we are going to be on fire for the Lord. We are going to be diligent for the Lord. Zealous for Him. In our love for Him. And to give God the glory. Let's learn from this. Let's none of us be lukewarm. Let's make sure we are all living for Jesus. Living for God. With that passion and zeal in our hearts. God bless.